Hello everyone and welcome to the CircuitPython weekly meeting for February 28th, 2022. It's the time of the week where we get together to talk about CircuitPython. I'm Jeff and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython as well as floppy drives. Uh, CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. There are over 256 different little boards that you can run CircuitPython on. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing your hardware from Adafruit.com and uh, the resellers that we list on the Adafruit.com website. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. Uh, but people are around 24-7 to talk about uh, all things Adafruit, electronics, 3D printing, and more. So uh, come by anytime and stay a while. Uh, this meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. Um, in the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar that you can view or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. Uh, as we go through the meeting, I add timestamps to go with the video so that you can uh, skip around to see just the parts that interest you the most if you're watching after the fact. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so we think that's a handy option to offer. Uh, after the meeting, we'll post the link for the next meeting's notes to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord you can always find it in the pinned messages. Uh, that helps you add your notes before the following meeting. In fact, it's often helpful to add them throughout the week so that you don't forget your uh, accomplishments or the hug reports that you wanted to give. And as always, if you wish to participate but can't attend, you can leave uh, your notes in the document and the uh, host will read them at the right time during the meeting. We hold this meeting in five parts. Next up is Community News, where we get a preview of the uh, Python on Microcontrollers newsletter, take an overview of CircuitPython and Python hardware uh, around the internet and the community. Following that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries in Blinka, where we look at a statistical overview of the entire project, uh, look at some numbers separate from uh, kind of the touchy-feely parts of it. Next up after that is Hug Reports, the touchy-feeliest part of the whole meeting an opportunity to highlight the good things that folks are doing and uh, taking time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Um, an awesome antidote to bug reports, which are what we usually hear about. Uh, the fourth part is called status updates. During status updates, we uh, invite everyone to talk about what they've been up to in the last week or so, as well as what you hope to get up to in the following week or until the next meeting that you'll be able to join us on. And then last up is a section called In the Weeds. If we need to have a longer discussion about any of the topics that come up throughout the meeting or that you've identified ahead of time, this is when we will do it. Um, if it's anything that will take too long, please move it down to In the Weeds so that we can keep the status update section moving smoothly. And that covers the basic structure of the meeting. And with that, I will head on to overviewing community news. Um, We've got a number of kind of big project releases. So I'll start off with the Mu Python editor version 1.1.1 stable has been released. Uh, there has been a lengthy contribution and beta period with a lot of upgrades as well as translations. And we've got some links to the Adafruit blog and the Made with Mu website. And there's also an interesting video on YouTube called the Making of Mu, which I think kind of uh, visually shows the Git history of participants and uh, where they work within the code. And that is a little bit abstract, but it was fun. I watched some of it. Uh, next up, we had our own release, CircuitPython 7.2.0. Thank you to Dan over the weekend, and uh, thank you to all the contributors. You can check out the uh, GitHub, and I have failed to put the link in the notes doc uh, to find the release notes, or you can go to circuitpython.org to download it. Next up, the inaugurable episode, I believe, of the CircuitPython show uh, is going to air on March 1st and will feature an interview with Katni. Other announced guests include Les Pounder of Tom's Hardware, Professor John Gallagher of Boston College, Todd Kurt uh, and Rose Hooper of Maker, 
and Scott Shawcroft, the CircuitPython lead developer. And there is a bunch of links in the notes document. Um, so check those out. Uh, next up in the project department, picked out as project of the week, at the Saigon South International School, two Sphero RVRs, two VEX Robotics games, two boards, a Raspberry Pi Pico, and an Adafruit Metro M4 Express running the same CircuitPython program. Sensing is done via an HCSR04 ultrasonic sensor attached to the front of each vehicle. Each step of the vehicle's trip uses a different control algorithm from a library. And there's some GitHub and Twitter links about uh, this. I'm not actually sure if it's a contest or just a tech demo, but uh, there's also an animated GIF, so check that out in the notes doc. And another project, uh, we have an Introduction to Software Development and Coding, Challenges for Blind and Low Vision Coders course, including HTML, ARIA, and Python while using assistive technology. And that is from American Printing House via Twitter. So this is just a preview and some of the highlights that caught my eye from the draft of the CircuitPython weekly newsletter. And that is a community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. You can check out the complete archives at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. And that's also where you can sign up to subscribe. We always aim to highlight the latest Python and hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, PyCrowPython, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. You can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And a big thing, thanks to Anne for almost every week assembling this huge mass of information. And uh, it's just a fire hose of great stuff. It was hard to pick out just a few top items for this. But we're going to uh, cut it short there and subscribe to the newsletter if you want the full details. So next up, we have the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. So uh, we have our lovely bot, Adabot. Check out the um, events on GitHub over the past seven days and uh, give us a little summary of that. So it kind of keeps us grounded in real world facts about how the projects are progressing. And so overall, some of the top numbers are that we had 33 pull requests merged from 23 authors and 11 reviewers. And as usual, there are some names that aren't familiar to me, and I apologize as I pr try to pronounce these. Uh, we have Milija uh, as one uncommon name. Uh, Purples is a relatively uh, recent joiner, but has been doing a lot lately. Shabala is uh, not one I recognize. Chow8219. Uh, boy, Rimwolf Redux. Zelwarto. Flom84. Uh, so thank you to all those authors of uh, pull requests that we were able to merge. Um, and then those were reviewed by 11 different people. Um, a lot of names that we see every week or most every week. I think Tectric may be new or newer to this list, so thank you for coming on board as an official reviewer. Um, so reviewers are the people who enable us to take all these contributions from authors. You do things like uh, check out a pull request, make sure that it uh, addresses the problem or enhancement that it was uh, working on, check the coding for style or possible new problems and catch those early, just uh, generally keeping the quality of our contributions high. So uh, thank you to these reviewers who are listed by name because GitHub calls them reviewers. And thank you to everybody else who comments on the issues and pull requests um, as we work on them that is always a valuable addition. Uh, so next, uh, let's see, I didn't negotiate this ahead of time, but uh, Dan, are you able to tell us about the core since Scott's not here? Okay, sure. So uh, in the past week, we uh, 14 pull requests were merged by 13 authors, which is terrific. Uh, so almost one author pro per request. Um, Thank you very much. There were five reviewers. There are still 16 open pull requests. Some of those are in abeyance until 8.00. Some of them are drafts. And there are a couple that, uh, uh, most of them are very new and still in process. So that's good. Um, three issues were closed by two people and 10 issues were opened by nine people. 
So we're up on issues and we probably need to do some pruning. Uh, there are 503 open issues now. There are six active milestones. That's a way of labeling a set of open issues. There are zero open issues for 730. There actually, there's now one because I moved an issue into there uh, an hour ago. There are 25 open issues that we hope to fix by the end of 7XX. There are eight open issues for 800. Those are mostly issues that need to be closed once we're done with uh, 700 and are moving 7XO and are moving on to the 800 releases. Um, 18 for libraries and 447 long-term open issues, which are a varying um, level of urgentness. Three open support issues and one issue not assigned a milestone, which we need to triage. Okay. All right, and. Uh... Of course, as we talked about earlier, a version 7.2.0 was released, so that's a big step forward. Oh, for yeah. Core. yeah, I'm going to say everything we said several times. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll probably cover that at least two more times. Um, okay. Let's see. And, and going back to overall, I skipped the overall uh, statistics on issues. So overall in the project, we had 17 issues closed by nine people, while 16 were opened by 15 people. Um, and with that, I will ask Katni to tell us about the libraries. Thanks, Jeff. So this section applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that begins with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras. So across all of these repos, 17 pull requests were merged by 11 authors, and we had nine reviewers. Um, the oldest Pull request that was merged was 64 days old, so we're still slowly getting through the older PRs, and most of them were one or zero days old. We currently have 13 open pull requests, which is amazing. It continues to go down. Um, and in terms of issues, we had 13 issues closed by seven people and four opened by four people, leaving us with 617 open issues. 209 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to Py or to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more. You can search the issues to find something interesting to you. You can, if you're interested in reviewing, you can search the PRs. Um, with that, if you have hardware, test it. If you don't, you can look at the code for syntax and style and so on. Uh, leave a comment and let us know you took a look that is always helpful and after you're comfortable with that we can talk about moving you to the review team um good first issue is a great place to start if you're looking to contribute but you've never contributed to open source before and we have a guide on contributing to circuit python using git and github as well as all of us available on discord uh, during the week to help you we would like to see you be able to contribute in a way that works for you in terms of library updates in the last week, there have been no new libraries, but there is a list of updated libraries, which I will just leave in the notes if you're interested. Um, and that's, we're, we're still slowly getting through older PRs, which is good. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to see that number come down so far. Um, obviously there's always gonna be some open PRs because things are getting reviewed or whatever, but um, it's really great to see that number coming down. And thanks to Foamy Guy, who's been uh, putting the effort into going through the older PRs to get those merged. And that's what I've got. Thank you, Katni. And finally, to round out this section, I will invite Maker Melissa to tell us what is going on with Blinka this week. Hello. Um, Blinka is our uh, MicroPython and CircuitPython in, um, I'm sorry, let me start that over again. Uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython and Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. And this week we had two pull requests merged by two authors and two reviewers uh, that leaves five open pull requests. Um, there was one closed issue by one person and two opened by two people, leaving a net of 73 open issues. And there have been 14,985 High wheels downloads in the last month, and we are currently supporting 87 boards. And that's it. All right, thank you, Melissa. Next up is Hub Reports. So 
there are all sorts of people around us in this community, on Discord, on GitHub, on Twitter, um, in the real world. And in Hug Reports, we invite everybody to uh, tell us about what uh, they saw going on that was great and supports the community and makes us all better. And so I will start and then I will head uh, down through the notes document in order as it's given. Uh, so this week I just have a group hug for everyone who has contributed to the 720 release. And that's not only those people credited on GitHub as authors and reviewers, but also everyone who shared ideas, filed bug reports, tested their project with pre-releases, etc. So if you're hearing this, I'm almost certainly uh, thanking you uh, for the work that you did. Um, each release is the best release ever, and we are just going to keep going with the support of all you wonderful people. All right, and up next, I have notes from C. Grover, uh, who has a hug report to the team and community for the newest release. I continue to be amazed by the pace and quality of the collective community process. A hug to, to, to yesterday's wise mentors that encouraged and pushed me forward into a rewarding lifelong passion for electronics and music and all the wonderful trappings and friends that come with the territory, and to today's mentors that nurture and strengthen the fabric of new interests, acquired skills, and knowledge. And with that, I will hand it over to Dan. Okay. Uh, thanks to everybody who helped with the 720 uh, stable release. Uh, really appreciate it. We had a, a bunch of new people working on bug fixes and uh, people submitting great um, issues and so forth. And it was, it was very helpful. So we're on to 7.3 or something like that, maybe 7.2.1, we'll see. Uh, thanks to T. Ikigami, who got um, this, the native module helper for async.io called as, underscore async.io. It's called underscore uasync.io in MicroPython, and we renamed it to underscore async.io in CircuitPython. And I had put off doing that because I was having trouble getting uh, some internal thing working right, and T. Ikigami got it working, so thanks very much. And thanks to Rimwolf, Rimwolf Redux, who has uh, submitted uh, a PR, which caused a whole bunch of things having to do with type annotations to happen. And we've been, we were working together over the weekend about how to help solve that. That was very helpful. OK. All right. And next up, Foamy Guy, what's on your mind today? All righty, thanks, Jeff. Um, first hug report is uh, is for Adafruit uh, for always striving to do the right thing and serve as a, a role model uh, during crazy events of the world. Uh, a lot of companies are happy to just keep their head down, uh, keep a low profile, uh, so to say, and uh, not really do a whole lot until it starts affecting them directly. And uh, I think it's very admirable that that Adafruit will um, kind of try to pipe up and uh, and uh, say and do the right thing uh, in all of the. All the crazy things that have happened in the world, uh, of course, in the last couple of years, but um, for many, many years they've been doing this. So um, thank you to them, to Katni and, uh, and PT, uh, who both went out of their way to ensure open communication was possible and uh, both have uh, done quite a bit to help me in being comfortable as uh, a, new, a new member of the team. So a uh, special thank you to both of those folks. Um, AT Makers Bill, uh, during a recent stream, I ran across something that I didn't quite understand with dot stars, and AT Makers Bill went on a bit of a uh, an expedition to figure out the uh, the answer of what you know uh, what I was coming across basically, and shared what they found. So uh, I really appreciate that. Um, to Dan H and anybody else who contributed anything to new release seven two zero stable. And then uh, lastly, I'll leave it with a, a group hug to everyone uh, in the wonderful community, because I appreciate all of you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next up, I have a note from Jerry, who's missing the meeting today, and he just has a group hug for everybody. And that brings us to Katni. Hello. So uh, I have a few hug reports today. Uh, one for Brent for reviewing some Adafruit IO MQTT code for me and cleaning it up a little. I've not dealt with MQTT before and had no idea what it should look like or what a couple of sections were doing. Brent moved a couple things around, added a few comments, and cleared all of that up. He also provided a link to a guide with MQTT explanations for me to read and link to on my uh, example page, which was super helpful. 
uh, to Anik Data for giving me a place to start with troubleshooting a very silent failure in some CircuitPython code. Um, it just hangs, which I'll talk about later, um, with no error. So uh, I had no idea where to start, and Anik Data gave me an idea. And to Lemon on the Python Discord server for providing me with some code and a ton of resources for a new project for me that will be a serious learning experience and for putting in the time to help me with it. So thank you very much. That's what I've got. Thank you. And next is Maker Melissa. Remember to unmute. Or would you like me to read it out for you? All right. Uh, I'll just go ahead. Hey, I'm sorry. I couldn't find that mute button. We've uh, all I been there. Give, go ahead. I wanted to give everybody involved in getting CircuitPython 7.2.0 out and a group hug to everyone who kept things uh, going while I was out last week. Thank you. We missed having you around. All right. Uh, next, I have a note from Mark Gambler, who is also missing the meeting today. And he has a hug report for Dan H for Async IO. Finally had a chance to try Async IO out, and it made a project even easier to create. And then uh, I have a couple more to read out for you. Uh, Tammy Makes Things has a group hug to everyone for being awesome. And uh, Tectric doesn't seem to be in the meeting. And they would like to thank Katni for giving opportunities to work on library infrastructure. I'm already using my learnings like CI in my own projects. And a hug to anyone who worked on the release actions for libraries. Being able to build MPY files and attach to releases automatically is fantastic. A hug to Foamy Guy for the insightful commentary while reviewing my PR on stream. A hug to anyone who's worked on Adacruit WSGI. It's by far my favorite library to tinker with. And rounding out hug reports, a group hug. And that takes us to status updates. Like Hug Reports, it is held in a round robin, and we invite you to let us know what you've been up to since the last time we've uh, gotten together, as well as what uh, you plan to work on until we have a chance to meet again. And I will start the section, and once again, we'll go in the document order. So um, last week, I wrote and released a guide about modifying a PC drive to read flippy disks with Flux Engineer Grease Weasel, as well as Adafruit's upcoming Grease Weasel compatible board. Uh, I got an Apple II computer for floppy testing, and I got my Apple II floppy drive moving its read-write head under the control of CircuitPython. This week, I hope that I'll pick up some small CircuitPython work, um, and I will be giving a talk called From Zero to CircuitPython this Saturday for the Dublin Linux Users Group. And then apparently I stopped writing my status updates um, before I wrote the major item, which is I'm continuing to work on the Apple II floppy world. Um, I'm preparing a pull request for Flux Engine so that it can write Apple format floppies on a standard PC drive mechanism. And I'm also continuing to work on the hardware interface for an Apple II disk II floppy drive uh, so that it can be connected to Adafruit boards and work with Grease Weasel or Flux Engine host um, software. And as usual, um, that's probably going to end up taking the bulk of my time because there is a lot that I'm learning as I do all that. Then next up, I'm going to read you notes from C. Grover. C. Grover wrapped up two of three PCB projects. The final, was, final one is on hold, needing some SMD feather wing sockets. Uh, C. Grover was certain that there were more in the inventory. Also, modified two Pi Badge LTs to expand their usefulness. They can sport add-on feather wings now. Oh, that's where the SMD feather wing sockets went. Finally got around to creating the CircuitPython Atari Pump Console emulator I've been thinking about for a few years. The new class accepts the traditional oscillator frequency and one-shot pulse width input values and develops the resultant waveform on a PWM-capable output pin. Tests on an R P20 Feather dramatically outperformed the original NE555 analog circuit and needed to be throttled back in order to stay in the range of human hearing. 
should be relatively simple to add MIDI and Euro Rack CV features. And in the notes document, you can find a link to the GitHub repo. And this is C Rover's words, not mine, the annoying stereo demo reel. All right, and now, that's a lot. Uh, next up is Dan H. Okay, so as we mentioned several times already, I released CircuitPython 7.20. 7.2.0, which is the stable latest minor stable release that was on Thursday. Um, I assume you've tried it, maybe. Some of you may have tried it. I'm preparing for the next alpha release of 7.3.0. Um, I don't know exactly when that will be, but there's some stuff that needs to get moved around and set up for that. Um, a lot of I've spent a lot of time in the past week working on various issues having to do with type annotation and typing and libraries for typing and fix some things, but there's still some things that are not quite working. Whenever we add some new type annotation, um, we used to have a version of CircuitPython typing, or we still do have a version of CircuitPython typing that's inside uh, CircuitPython itself, which was for generating documentation. I'm trying to use the the new library that I work I created a few weeks ago. Um, I'm trying to generalize some scripts that are inside the CircuitPython uh, build system so that we can add new uh, types more easily. Um, some of these fixes are already merged and some of them are in process uh, piggybacking on uh, at least one existing um, pull request. And I'm learning a lot about doing typing and type annotations in Python. There are some, have been a lot of changes. It's in a bit of a flux in the C Python world, as far as I can tell. If you have a lot of experience about this, um, let me know or put in your two cents. Um, so that's just, it's just, it's, it's interesting. We tr I've tried to get by not understanding it as well as I should, and now I need to understand it better. And the other thing that I've been working on is an async, async IO HTTP client. Uh, I took the existing request library and made it async, but I, and I changed, I've written the code, but I haven't tested it yet. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Jeff. Uh, last week, I uh, this one actually might have been two weeks ago, but I think I failed to mention it last week. I ran a cookie cutter for a new register spy library so we already had the register library which is um from what i understand like a a, lo a a higher level interface for working with you know the the actual lower level data stream uh, of i2c that's what the existing register is it was a pr at one point to add similar interface for spy uh, but it was decided it would be better to spin it off into its own library so uh, I ran the cookie cutter for that and I set up an issue that kind of outlined my understanding of where it stands and what it needs. Um, and I definitely am happy if uh, there's anyone who can provide any more insight, especially if you have uh, experience with uh, the lower level drivers and especially spy um, is what this one is all pertaining to, which I don't have a lot of experience myself with. So uh, open to input from anybody there. Um, made some improvements on the PyPortal Winamp project. Specifically, we can now support the PyPortal Titano with its larger screen and everything um, has been resized and looks all nice on that screen now. And then also added the ability for it to auto-generate the playlist uh, by searching the SD card to find MP3 files. So if you don't feel like um, building out your playlist ahead of time and saving it, you can uh, just run it and it will find uh, at least files in the first couple of layers on the SD card. Um, and then I updated the root certificate, which is inside of the Nina firmware. And then I also figured out how to make a PR in CircuitPython uh, to have it pull that latest update as well. And I made test builds and stuff to ensure that that was actually uh, allowing our requests to succeed. And it seems like it has been. So um, that I think is pretty much set at this point, um, which gets us into this week. I've been, uh, this morning I worked on updating the web telescope project, which was actually the, uh, the original motivation for the whole certificate stuff from above. Um, and so I've got that set up and it appears to be working on the mag tag, um, potentially helping out with some new uh, Discord bot functionality. Uh, and then 
I also need to circle back around on the GZIP PR. I think there's been a little bit of movement since the last time I looked at that, so I want to check in and see where we're at there and see if there's anything I can help with. Uh, and then uh, for my last one this week, I'll be joining uh, Scott to chat for a little bit on Deep Dive this Friday and then uh, taking over to do the Deep Dives uh, Fridays uh, following this week. So uh, if folks are interested, you can uh, watch on Friday, and uh, I'll be on there to chat with Scott for a bit. Thanks. Thank you, Foamy Guy. Uh, next up, we go to Katni. Thanks, Jeff. All right, so last week I worked on more templates for both CircuitPython and Arduino for reading the LC709203, which is a battery monitor um, that's built into some of the newer uh, feathers. Started a template for uh, Adaf for Adafruit IO example um, for CircuitPython that does send and receive, which I didn't the sending I didn't even know was a thing. Um, and then ran into the Adafruit IO example hanging with no error. Um, it just stops running. And there's no interaction with the serial console at that point. Um, <clears throat> you can still get to CircuitPy and make changes and save them, but it doesn't reload. Um, once you hit the reset button, those changes that you made are still there and the code runs again for X number of seconds and then hangs again. Um, Anecdata suggested uh, that the issue might be with um, the CPU temperature, the microcontroller.cpu.temperature, um, as apparently they ran into something with it uh, on ESP32 S2. And um, to do this totally out of order, I, I just reran the code with that line commented out and just using a hard coded number, um, and it's still running. So apparently that was a good, <laughs> good place to start because that's exactly where the problem is. Um, I worked on an Arduino template page for using the built-in TFT on boards. Um, we have a number of them with a built-in TFT and, uh, we don't really have an Arduino page in those guides for how to just just get some graphics set up going. I submitted some fixes to the Arduino ST7735, ST7789, 98 library. I think it's I think it's actually 89. Um, that's the graphics library for the T TFTs that apply to that template. Um, one of them was to make it work better on the TFT feather because the display is smaller than the others. And the others, what uh, the other fixes are to move around the initialization so that it's all in the same order, so that the explanation in the template actually makes sense, because the template is in a certain order, and it actually doesn't matter what order things are in. But I don't want to. The, the template is kind of immutable; um, the code is not. So I just updated where things got initialized. Updated the. BNO055 circuit Python page to not mention Feather M0 because the library no longer works with M0 boards. And uh, because there were wiring diagrams and references to M0, uh, somebody bought a Feather M0 specifically to use with this board and found out, sadly, that it doesn't work. So we shouldn't have an issue with that moving forward uh, and various miscellaneous. This week, um, Troubleshoot the Adafruit IO CPU temperature example hanging. Um, I've at least determined that <clears throat> it is the CPU temperature that's causing the hang. Um, the next step is to run it on a um, Metro ESP32 S2 and hook up a serial TUSB with um, to the debug pin to see whether it actually gives me any useful information when it when it hangs. Um, finish the templates, finish the T Feather TFT guide. I need to write a guide for the Feather ESP32 version two, uh, which to be clear, does not support CircuitPython, um, but will include Arduino and MicroPython if I can get MicroPython going. Um, there's a question in the forums that applies to the Bluefruit LE Connect Basics guide, and I need to update the guide to have a reference to that question. Um, the MCP23017 I2C GPIO expander needs a guide. Um, there's a new TFT that needs a guide. There's a VL53 
BCD um, time of flight sensor, I think is what it is, um, needs a guide. And we still need to do a template. I still need to do a template for async IO. And then um, in my off time, I am working on a house Discord bot for the Adafruit Discord server, which the plan is to initially have a feature that flags when folks post code and it's not formatted or it's not formatted properly and post the message that says, hey, we see that you've posted code. Um, it's not formatted. Here's how you format it. Uh, it's something that's on the Python server, but it turns out it's not a standalone bot. It is part of a very large, very complex, very tied to the Python Discord server uh, bot. And so I'm actually working with one of the um, server owners to figure out slimming everything down because um, just to get it going, I ended up with about half of it in, in my local repo. And uh, that was way more than even he expected that I would need. Um, so I have to kind of tease things apart because there's a lot of stuff that is they wrote specifically for themselves. And it's, some of them are cool features and I kind of want them. Others of them are features that we don't need. Um, so I have to go back, like go 10 steps in and figure out what, what is it a dependency for and then figure out how to remove it. Um, so it's, this is really the first Python project I've ever worked on. Um, circuit Python, obviously quite a bit, but I've not worked with uh, C Python specifically yet. And the whole thing is written in Python. Um, so core features I have sort of an understanding of. There's some other stuff that CircuitPython doesn't support that is way outside my wheelhouse. So I uh, this is going to be a massive learning experience for me. And so far it's been fun. And I'm looking forward to getting that finished up. That's what I've got. All right. I, I looked a little bit about that. And there is a daunting amount of stuff there. So yeah, uh, as you muscle through it, uh, <laughs> you will be learning, that's for sure. All right, well, next up is Melissa. Hello. Uh, first of all, I wanted to give a late hug report to, for Raspberry Pi for turning 10 today. Um, also, I wanted to, for la and then for my status report uh, for last week, um, I was out pretty much all week due to health issues, so I didn't get much done, but I did add the type annotations for the platform detect repo. Uh, this week, I'm going to be catching up on stuff because of last week and also preparing to give a talk for the Dublin Linux developers this weekend. And that's all, all right. I have. Thank you. Uh, next, I have notes from uh, Tammy Makes Things, uh, who was on vacation for part of the week, so didn't get as much time to work on things as I'd like. But last week, I worked on the design of my CircuitPython library for representing and drawing decks of cards and I fixed my HDMI inputs so I can use my better camera for my Twitch screen. This week I'm planning to do one or two Twitch stream, including tonight at 7 uh, MST, I assume is Mountain Time, and either Thursday evening or on the weekend. I hope to set up a regular schedule for streaming uh, and start implementing my card deck library. And there's a link in the notes document to Tammy's Twitch, which I think somebody's going to copy into the channel, maybe? Uh, it's switch.tv slash Tammy Makes Things. And then uh, on to the last item from Status Updates, which is notes from Tectric. Last week, finished my Edge Badge Discord Companion project, added more effects to the Display.io effects library in CircuitPython org, and more type annotations. This week, regrouping and finding out what's next. So that rounds up, rounds out status reports and takes us to in the weeds. Um, this is the time where we get to discuss those looming and uh, amorphous problems. And I will start by reading the item from Dexter, who is not here in the text chat or here in the voice chat. Uh, Dexter suggests consider establishing a trail rating system for various development tasks. Correcting a typo would be a zero, while porting to a new microprocessor would be a 10. Um, 
I can speak a little bit more about this as well, because I think this idea came out um, during my stream. We talked about this with a couple folks that were watching. Please do. Um, and it's basically like we have right now good first issue, which is really good at helping folks find things that they are able to work on. So this is really the core of this, at least in my mind, is an extension of that idea of good first issue, but um, raising it up to a couple of different higher skill levels. So um, zero to 10 is one way we talked about it, you know, like zero pro probably would match good first issue and 10 would be like, you know, probably pretty hard. Uh, it's something that you really need a lot of experience to try and tackle. Um, even if we had a fewer number of different ratings, you know, even if it was like, you know, a star rating or something, zero stars to five stars or uh, a smaller, you know, a smaller gradient of actual different uh, ratings. I think this might be a good thing to help folks who are still relatively new, who might not necessarily know whether or not they're capable of tackling any given issue or PR. Um, so the, the core idea is trying to come up with some you know, relatively static uh, rating system where issues and PRs can have this rating applied to them and, and it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, right? If somebody rates something to be a little bit harder or a little bit easier, um, we're never gonna be like exactly on the money for, for everything because everyone has a different skill set as well. So it's kind of a an individualized thing, but basically a way to give folks a little bit more idea of like, this is relatively easy or this is maybe a medium difficulty or maybe this is a, a quite a difficult task that you really probably need you know, more experience to dive into. Even if we just had a couple of buckets like that, I think it would help folks find things that they might be more comfortable to try and tackle. Uh, whereas today they might, they might see an issue or a PR um, and they might have the ability to do it, but they may not know actually what, um, what all is gonna go into it or, or how difficult that is gonna be for them. Um, so that's kind of the idea is like a, a rough rating system that, that tries to just expand upon good first issue a little bit and lay out a few more categories of, you know, uh, you know, like good second issue or, or something like that. Like it requires a little bit more and then, you know, maybe a little bit higher would be a medium difficulty or a hard difficulty or something like that. Um, and I think originally we discussed this in the context of the core. Um, but I don't see any reason why a similar thing couldn't apply to libraries and other places as well, truthfully. Um, and I also don't think we need to necessarily like do a massive sweep and apply ratings to everything that's existing. It could even be something where like moving forward, um, you know, you take a stab at the rating whenever you create an issue or a PR or one of the one of the early reviews could be adding uh, a rating, you know, somebody else could come by and see it and add a rating. Um, I will say um, probably the biggest technical challenge, I think, would be like where where would we keep this rating and how would we represent it? So we have good first issue, which is a GitHub label. Um, I don't know that we would necessarily want like uh, more labels, especially if we were going to go zero to 10. Uh, but even if we had a, a smaller range, um, I don't know if labels would be the best way, possibly. Um, but I think that's probably the open technological question is like how could we actually do something like this and then of course you know the um the, the philosophical question of do we want to do we want to do something like this um yeah i think i hit i think i hit most of everything that's um mostly what all we discussed i think during the stream so open to uh to ideas from anybody else on, along those lines All right, does anybody else have something that they would like to say about this? All right, well, thanks, Foamy Guy, for letting us know what the context of what Dexter was talking about. Um, I don't yeah, know what else sure. to, to say about it right now. Um, I would say just reach out. Um, you can, if anybody like is watching this after the fact or comes up with ideas after the fact, I'd say just reach out to uh, to Dexter and I on on um, Discord. Uh, you can you can ping us. Um, I, I hate to consent to, to being pinged for Dexter, but I, I imagine um, that they would want want the heads up on that. So yeah, if anyone does end up having any ideas, um, 
do that, and it's just kind of an idea we're kicking around. So um, yeah, I'm happy to uh, to lay it out and kind of get the get the thought out there into the community for now. You could also file an issue on the core. Okay. Yeah. yeah. With okay. you know, with all of this information, um, so that because you know Scott's not here and. Um, it's I, I like I agree it's an interesting concept, but it does add a separate layer of work, if you yep. will. Um, but I think an issue to discuss it makes the most sense so that it's not just lost in the, you know, massive messages on Discord. Okay, cool. Yeah, I will. Um, I will try to put a more concise, um, get written down in a more concise way, and then get an issue created for it. All Sounds right. good. Well, with that, I will move on to the other In the Weeds topic, uh, which is from Mark, uh, who can't be here with us today, uh, but says, if there is a broad agreement on the Zlib module names, PR6069 in the core, I can start work to update that in the next couple of weeks. This can always wait a week or for another time if it's easier to discuss then. Um, and I guess similar to what uh, Katni was saying, about the trail rating discussion, um, probably the uh, pull request is a better place to discuss that. Although if anybody has an opinion or knowledge off the top of their head about the state of that uh, pull request, we'd love to hear it for right now. I don't know who's been reviewing on that PR. Yeah, I have, uh, I've been involved uh, a little bit. I did some of the testing on it and I worked on the, the project where we we first found the need for this. Um, I think this, my guess is probably that Mark might have been looking for feedback from Scott uh, more specifically. Um, I didn't get here. I, I didn't talk to Mark about this this week, so I could be incorrect, but that's my hunch. And I think where we're at on the PR is basically um, the module. So we got this module from MicroPython, and it, uh, it contained kind of two different things. One was just a decompressed method, um, which you pass in the full sort of data to, and it gives you back the fully decompressed data. Um, but there was also a stream type of a API, I think it called it decomp IO, where it could wrap in a stream and just sort of uh, decompress, you know, a certain amount of bytes at a time. And then eventually, if you put it in a loop, you could get the whole data. Um, and I think where we're at on the PR is that the that stream concept does not really exist in Zlib uh, the C Python module. Um, so I, my understanding is the desire is to try to match the C Python APIs where we can. So since Zlib does exist in C Python, we don't want to have part of our API that is different than C Python one. So essentially we would get rid of or move the streaming portion of the API that exists to a different place. And so there's kind of, I think, Two, two main possibilities. Uh, one of them is that it gets more heavily refactored and it gets put into, uh, I think, is it gzip? There's another CPython module called gzip, um, which I think can act on streams like this. I will say, however, the API is different. It doesn't work the exact same way as the MicroPython one did. So it would require some more substantial refactoring if we wanted it to, to get it to a state where it matches gzip. Um, so that's kind of one option is, is move it to there and refactor it to match. Uh, the other option being choose a completely new module name for it that doesn't exist in CPython, and therefore it is um, you know less of a problem that it doesn't match because it's not matching anything specific to uh, CPython. So I think what Mark is after is just um, you know. Uh, input from folks on which one of those options we want to try to aim for. So, um, and I will say to add to that, I guess, from my perspective, I think that it would be good to get the zlib.decompress method as is uh, implemented into the core. I would be happy to see that put in, even if we lost the, uh, the streaming API for now, uh, because that decompress method will help us with a project, right? Uh, we tend to do things based on the project, and we have a project where our API is returning compressed data. So um, having that function as it is uh, does match CPython and would unblock that particular project to move forward. Um, 
So I would be happy to, to see that. And then um, realistically, I think I would probably be happy as well if the streaming portion of the API were moved to a new name, uh, because it, it sounds to me, and all, all of this stuff is in the, the PR there, so I don't want to speak for Mark, but um, Mark has put in the PR some notes about this. It sounds to me like maybe uh, he is not necessarily going to be, or, or, or maybe could not get to it for quite a while, but is not necessarily interested in doing a more full refactor uh, of it right now to try to make it match GZIP. So I would lean towards either removing the streaming API altogether or uh, moving it into its own module that is a new name that doesn't match CPython and sort of earmarking it to say, you know, down the line, eventually we would like to refactor this to move into GZIB and to match the API there, but currently it doesn't, um, but it does work for, for what it does, so it's worth uh, providing. That's kind of where I would lean towards is, um, again, to recap, just getting decompress as is inside Zlib and then, um, removing the streaming or moving it into a, a module with its own uh, name, which is part of what Matt, uh, Mark has asked here is like, I guess, ideas for that name. And there are a couple in the PR as well, which I'll uh, leave for folks that want to get over to the PR and uh, follow the, the chain there. Um, I think that's probably a good overview on where that's at and what the, uh, what the question more specifically is about uh, that Mark put in here. All right. Thank you and belated hug report to Foamy Guy for being on top of seemingly everything, <laughs> every issue and every pull request in the system, uh, or at least those that uh, need to be talked about. Um, and that concludes the in the weeds topics for today. And so I will wrap up the meeting as I get to my notes. Um, this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for the 28th of February, 2022. Thank you to everyone who participated live. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, considering, consider purchasing from the shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit, and the podcast will be, be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday, as, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. That will be March 7th. Uh, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about, new, uh, about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. And uh, with that, I just uh, want to say, see you all next week. And thanks again, everybody. Thanks, everyone.